I'm Zark Kumar. I'm CEO and co-founder of Cube26. Uh, before uh, we started Cube26, uh, I used to work at Yahoo uh, with their search team at the uh, California office. And before that, I used to head R&D at an ad startup in New York. Uh, we started uh, Cube26 almost like four years back, and uh, we have been uh, particularly working with the Android ecosystem for almost two years. Uh, we work with most of the leading Indian OEMs, uh, everyone from Panasonic, Micromax, Carbon, and we do a lot of Android customization. So everything, uh, when you boot up the phone, the lock screen, to the launcher, uh, to some of the app that comes on the, uh, like, you know, the customization that comes on the phone, uh, there would be some bit of Cube26 involved. Uh, we recently raised a fund from Tiger Global and Flipkart, basically, uh, to uh, customize more of the uh, like devices that are out there and venture into different other form factor of devices. Uh, these were, uh, I think, two signature products from the past I just uh, wanted to show you guys. One was the Look Away to Pause uh, video player integration where we integrated a uh, feature uh, that if you're watching a video and let's just somebody comes along and you uh, look at them, the video would automatically pause. It was uh, on, on Micromax Canvas 4, and then multiple products uh, came after that. Uh, Blink Play to Selfie that was on Panasonic, uh, which is like if your camera is in selfie mode and you just blink your eye, uh, it would take a selfie. So these were some of the enhancements that we did uh, almost like uh, one and a half to two years back. And till now, like, we are almost on 8 million devices that does uh, a lot of these uh, uh, sort of customization. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about app discovery problem, uh, which is like something that we do uh, fundamentally at the company, which helps monetize a lot of uh, uh, the devices that are being shipped by the OEM. So as you know that hardware margins are getting thin, uh, so the manufacturers are looking for a way to generate dollars from the device. And we as a company, we sort of come in and help this uh, monetization process by helping user understand uh, like their behavior and then download apps from the store which would make sense to them. Uh, before uh, any discovery process, you need uh, certain ways to collect data. So on the phones that are being shipped out, uh, some of these are, let's just say, a music player that we built, a uh, news application, there's a calendar app that's out there. Uh, so as users are using these applications, uh, we are getting some of the anonymized user data on our platform. Uh, this is like a general flow of uh, when the data comes. So we use Kafka as a platform where uh, multiple devices uh, uh, are sending data to our server. Uh, once uh, we collect all these logs, uh, then Hadoop uh, file distribution system comes along that uh, takes this huge amount of bunch of data and uh, pushes to our for batch processing. Spark is a platform which is uh, most probably uh, people who are involved in machine learning or the data science community would know. Uh, so on these batch data that we get, we run a lot of uh, distributed uh, processing, which is uh, Spark is uh, one of those platform which is better than the uh, HDFS Hadoop uh, in terms of like the just the speed that on which it can run. Uh, and after uh, we have run a lot of our algorithms, uh, which is basically profiling user things like uh, if a user who is on certain kind of let's just say. Uh, 3G or this particular RAM or this particular model lives in this network, has this using this particular kind of app and downloads a certain kind of app. So we map these kinds of activity and that's what we call like profiling anonymously like the uh, user profile. After that, uh, we, we basically use Apache Highways to uh, tag these uh, new users that we feel that, which uh, basically if if a user, a similar user, have downloaded an app, then finding out who, which would be the other apps that these users would use, and then we use a Aerospy cache to basically in real time push this recommendation out. So this basically goes through the flow of like you know uh, how we are collecting some of the anonymous data on our platform and how we are basically going in the back end 
and computing a lot of these kinds of recommendation and finally comes uh, up on the platform. Uh, this is uh, what we use uh, internally as a cl uh, collaborative filtering is a machine learning algorithm. Uh, there are two types, I mean user, user and there's item, item. We use the item, item collaborative filtering which we call it internally is app, app which basically translates to say uh, if Saurav Kumar who lives in Delhi and uses, uh, has certain properties and like you know, uh, uses let's just say Flipkart app, he has a tendency to use also Snapdeal app or a Mintra app. So this kind of uh, uh, like, you know, and if there is another user who is also like Saurav in terms of the attributes, the way we define him, uh, and if he also has a Flipkart app, then there's a huge amount of tendency that he will uh, download a Mintra or Snapdeal app. So we call this uh, problem statement as a app app recommendation uh, problem and we uh, and generally uh, like I said there are two kinds of one is user user uh, and item item so in item item basically what you're saying is uh, and something uh, just to note item item was actually released in 2003 Amazon also uses it on their platform if you have seen if you have bought X you would also like why? So this is a similar kind of recommendation algorithm that runs on their platform. Uh, so uh, this is in general better than just purely uh, saying user profiling and doing user user uh, because new models are coming in the market so you're suddenly the w way you were profiling these users suddenly changes so you have to recompute all of them and uh, just the computing similarity between a Saurav and another guy is extremely uh, computational expensive because we are running into some 1 cross 512 to 1024 attributes to define a user. Uh, so the way we do it is actually pretty simple. I mean there are two stages. One is a model building stage where uh, we look for similarity between pair of apps. So basically saying if let's just say one pair is Flipkart and Mintra then basically uh, the profiles of users who have used Flipkart app and then the profiles of user who have used uh, Mintra app, so uh, Flipkart and a Mintra. So that would be your one of the uh, combination and you would compute what amount of similarity they have and based on that, uh, once you have computed that, uh, you come to the recommendation stage. So where given a user uh, what would be uh, and certain properties that this, this is the attribute, you sort of compute uh, what would be the next app they would uh, download. Uh, so this is what it translates and uh, when we do that, uh, this is like a store that uh, runs on most of these OEM phones. Uh, here is like you know the some of the apps that we are recommending to the user and uh, we basically built it because a lot of the OEMs that uh, we when we started working with them we saw that their phones were usually bloated so there were a lot of apps that was pre-installed and that used to have like almost 90 percent uninstalled ratios uh, when we built this which is like after understanding how user is using their phone and what kind of apps they are opening or not using or downloading uninstalling we sort of dropped the uninstall rates to almost 30 to 40 percent which basically then user are uh, happily like downloading these user and then there's a retention in terms of uh, from the brand perspective that the uh, the user who is downloading their app they tend to use them on a longer scale uh, so this is just uh, one of the examples that we are using in the mobile domain uh, we recently, as you know, we've also ventured into Internet of Things uh, and Smart World was one of our product. So similarly here also we are using like as people are using their different bulbs, uh, uh, bulbs with different features, we are trying to understand what kind of apps they are using and based on these apps we are trying to recommend like different kinds of alert for them that if you are using this, this particular kind of app, you might be interested in using uh, alert which is Uber based. Uh, so this is uh, what uh, my talk was basically about, uh, how we are using uh, some of the uh, machine learning and the uh, data science to solve the monetization and app discovery problem, which obviously like there are a lot of companies like uh, Google uh, with their Play Store it's solving. Uh, what we are coming up is like one of the Indian tech companies were working with all these OEMs and also fundamentally looking at the same problem 
uh, at obviously a lesser scale than Google, but we are also running this on almost 8 million users today. So it's a fundamentally uh, extremely big scalable problem that we are solving. So any question that you guys have, I would be happy to answer. Uh, hi, Sandesh here. Uh, just wanted to check, uh, because you are working with a lot of OEMs and uh, a lot of ad platforms are trying to solve this problem on their end, as you rightly said. Uh, how different is your approach going to be compared to uh, the how the other ad platforms are trying to solve this? Or even apps themselves are trying to solve this using the data that they have. So are you saying uh, how different? Uh, how are we different from an ad platform that are trying to solve this problem? Yes, in terms of the approach, because ad platforms would have different set of signals. Uh, the app in itself, uh, they would have different set, set of signals they would uh, rely on. And how different is your approach going to be? Because you're directly working with the OAMs and sure. Uh, so if you look at uh, ad platform, right? So either they're uh, uh, they're integrated on uh, your different web pages or they're inside an app, right? So the limited understanding of that uh, of a user that they will have, it will be obviously like far too limited than us who exist on their operating system level. So we have a far reach understanding of like user data, not just from like what their consumption is on within my apps, but also outside like what kind of model is running on like if he's on Wi-Fi, if he's on 3G, uh, how much data he's consuming. Uh, his uh, the internal st uh, storage space, which network is on. Uh, so uh, when you're on a OS level, right? So you have a far uh, better data about user, and obviously uh, when there are saying right, like if you have more data, then you can recommend uh, better. So uh, but then obviously there are trade-offs as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's just like I mean we understand user fundamentally across like his uses through different apps and if you're just focused on one app, so inside, that is if you're inside a news app, right, so you're consuming different kinds of news content, but uh, so that will give you some understanding about the user, but in general to understand about his spending powers or where is located, tier one, tier two, there are a lot of other data that also comes along that helps you discover the different content and services. Uh, how do you uh, plan to pass the, these insights to uh, the app makers, if at all, you're planning to do that? Uh, so insights would be, I mean, probably like, I don't know, if within your app, if you're trying to solve this uh, recommendation problem, uh, so this that was just an insight of like how, uh, if you would want to solve this recommendation problem at a scale, then what are the different components that you should be A, looking at, and what are the, some of the machine learning uh, problems that are there? I mean, it's, uh, basically algorithms that are there that can help you solve it. Uh, so that was just a preview into it. And we are extremely like startup and developer friendly. So if there are any questions uh, that you guys think that we can help, so just write us an email on info at cube26.com and we would be very happy to like work along and find something. Thank you. Uh, there's tea break up next, and um, we'll 